Abortion needs to not only be illegal, but unthinkable. Where should Republicans message this? How should they message this differently? For a movement that calls themselves pro-choice, they are wanting to tell women that the only option and the only valid choice they have is to select to kill their unborn child. The facts are that legal abortions are down by well over 5,000 every month now. That's a lot of lives that never would have made it here before. But the people who say they're for choice have been arguing hard that women have the right to choose what they do with their bodies. Of course, that also leaves out the fact that the baby has no such choice. In the headlines of late, the court rulings on the abortion pill. Jenna Ellis is here to discuss where that's going. Jenna, good to have you with us. Great to see you, Rob. Thank you. So since the Roe v. Wade decision, um, a lot of polls continue to show that people want to make their own decision on what to do with their bodies. And um, of course, the life of the baby is affected, but that's not being taken into consideration by those who want to make that choice. The number of abortions are down. Um, newborns are being put up for adoption. We have, of course, the abortion pills uh, and their own dangers. Um, so this, the, the Supreme Court decision has had a political effect in races, and we've seen that. Is this still an uphill, uphill climb for the pro-life forces as we go forward? I don't think we need to look at it as an uphill climb. We need to look at this as a resounding victory for uh, the Dobbs decision to rightly and constitutionally put this issue of abortion regulation back in the hands of our legislators. That's on the state level and that's also in Congress. And constitutionally, that's the right position. And we now get to have a debate on the merits where previously uh, the, the anti-life community has been saying, well, this is settled precedent. We can't have these conversations. In my lifetime, I was born after 1973 in Roe versus Wade. I've never been able to have a debate on the merits in a state legislature. We get to have that opportunity, but we need to be messaging incredibly well and incredibly important. And we need to make sure that we say this isn't about choice for your own body. This is affecting a human life. And the government has an obligation to protect that life from the choice of killing it for absolutely no justifiable reason. So you mentioned messaging. Um, clearly, the Democrats have messaged this issue well uh, for many decades now. Where should Republicans message this? How should they message this differently? It doesn't matter really if it's gonna be the presidential race, congressional races, or school board races. It's, it's always an issue. Right. Well, we need to, uh, to, to say that first and foremost, life matters and that we know that life begins at conception. That is the science. And we also need to say there are other choices besides uh, just abortion. And for a movement that calls themselves pro-choice, they are wanting to tell women that the only option and the only valid choice they have is to select to kill their unborn child. We need to, as a church as well, um, as the Christian community, stand with women, provide uh, more engagement with uh, women who are facing crisis pregnancies. And there are so many resources that the left simply uh, just doesn't recognize and they aren't willing to show. And we need to be engaging this issue from the standard that the government is obligated to preserve and protect life and put the onus on them to say, why are they suggesting to women the only choice is abortion? We also need to be better messengers, for example, on um, this recent Supreme Court case that is looking at this abortion pill and whether or not the FDA can keep that on the market or whether they should just fast track another study. Uh, we shouldn't, as conservatives, be concerned about the method of abortion. It doesn't matter how they're killing children. We need to say all killings should stop. This is like saying if we take one pain reliever off the market, well, there's a wide variety of other uh, other alternatives that are on the market. And so this becomes a question of whether we are specifically intent as conservatives to say abortion needs to not only be illegal, but unthinkable. So the Supreme Court issued a stay on the two lower federal courts. A lot of confusion right now, even among the states. Where do you think this goes? To, in other words, does the Supreme Court take this up as a full case? 
They may, but ultimately, even if they say that this hasn't gone through uh, sufficient testing processes and they take it off the market for now, that just means that the FDA will fast track another study and they'll get it right back on. Or even if this particular drug isn't ultimately used, uh, then there are other alternatives. So again, we need to, as the pro-life advocate, say it's not about the method of killing a child or when and at what stage in pregnancy we're killing a child. We need to say that all killings of children are wrong, morally reprehensible, and that the government has an obligation to step in and preserve and protect life. The leftists have this wild and ridiculous talking point that the government is forcing births. Well, the last time I checked, government wasn't involved at all in the conception of a child. When a woman comes to a location to try to attempt to get an abortion, she's already pregnant. The government has an obligation at that point to step in and to protect that life from being maliciously and intentionally killed. We cannot, as conservatives, back off from that message. We can't apologize for it. And we have to go forward and win elections, win uh, these, these legislation fights on the merits of our arguments. And we should not ever, ever apologize for being the position that is for life and for the right choices. Prenatal care has gotten so much better through the years. So has technology where you 3D, 4D, you can see a real strong image of the fetus of the baby. How should that technology be used uh, to move this um, argument forward for Republicans and pro-life people? Well, in the Dobbs oral argument, uh, that whole conversation surrounded uh, around viability and what is the most workable standard. Well, the workable standard shouldn't even be a question to our law and policy. What should be the question is the fact that with this new technology, we can now prove scientifically what the Bible has told us all along, which is that life begins at conception. Every human being is made in the image of God, has inherent dignity and worth. And so we can use this technology to our advantage to substantively show that the pro-life movement has been right all along. We don't need to be talking about these arbitrary moral boundaries and guidelines of when is the viable standard, whether that's six weeks, 15 weeks, or in the third month of pregnancy. If we move that moral bright line at anywhere after conception, then what is the arbitrary standard to say that we can't move that literally anywhere? And we're seeing the conclusion of that uh, that illogical argument all the way with things like completed life bills or physician-assisted suicide that says that somehow our life at some stage in life after conception is no longer valuable to society on some arbitrary metric. So the pro-life movement isn't just about unborn babies in the womb. It's about the entire life from conception all the way until natural death. This is why we have laws against unjustified homicide, which is called murder. And that is a standard that we need to make sure to preserve and protect in this nation at all stages of life. Jenna, we appreciate you coming on Centerpoint. Thank you. Thank you so much.